Edward Pritchard, chairman of the Pritchard Company, is a member of the Institute of Engineers of Australia and the fellow of Melbourne Technical College in Mechanical and Automotive Engineering. Quiet, unassuming, Ted Pritchard is a man enveloped in a mission. The mission to demonstrate that steam power is competitive with and in many ways superior to other forms of automotive propulsion. Road tests of the green stripe Pritchard steam car, a 1963 Ford Falcon converted to steam power, were conducted in Melbourne and vicinity in November 1971. The American Senate committees were interested in pushing for low emission cars. So in November 1972, the car was flown to LA and uh, we set up and started the demonstrations and in three working weeks, 15 days, I think we gave about 35 demonstrations to the big motor companies, Ford, General Motors, American Motors. So they were quite, quite impressed with this small car from Australia. You know, there's a couple of things about Ted's engines. Firstly, they're what's called externally fired, i.e. you've got a furnace which boils water. The superheated steam then drives a piston. There's no combustion of fuel inside of cylinders. Now, a furnace uh, is a much more efficient way to burn anything. Uh, and as a result, you're getting a lot more work out of the fuel you're putting in, you're burning it a lot more efficiently, and you're getting much lower emissions. It doesn't have the unburnt hydrocarbons that make up soot and the um, volatile organic compounds that make up the photochemical smogs we get today, the nitrous oxides and things. Unlike any other car on the road now, Ted's um, Falcon, you could burn sump oil, you could burn petrol, you could burn diesel, you could burn ethanol, you could burn vegetable oil, you could burn any liquid fuel that was volatile enough, had a, enough octane rating, would run that car and there was no adjustment required. The motor companies promised to fix up the existing cars as the best bet and uh, so interest in alternate vehicles seemed to die down and we found it harder and harder to get contingent support. We did did not get continued support, so we carried on up to about 1980 and had to give it away. We just could not financially support the work any longer. That was an extremely disappointing time, as you can understand. The technology then, it was well before its time, and despite the small, you know, spike in oil prices in 70, 72, 73, shortly thereafter oil returned to, you know, 14, 15 US dollars a barrel. Petrol was incredibly cheap, um, and everyone lost interest, frankly. 